Hey, the name's Kurt, if you didn't know, and this is a time-lapse of me modelling the 3D model of the Bowsling. In fact, you may be seeing this before you've seen the Bowsling, just by chance, or you might be seeing it first because I'm going to upload this first, uh, basically because it's easier to edit and I'm pretty busy with uni at the moment. Interesting fact, you're hearing me speak normally right now, but because this video is so sped up, in order to make it work, I had to speak really, really slowly. See, here's a clip of me in real time. It worked out well because it meant I didn't have to concentrate so much on speaking as I was doing it. So yeah. Achoo, achoo. That was me sneezing. I couldn't slow those down. They are just uncontrollable. A second interesting fact, and this one's serious, is that this is the first time I have ever modelled something in 3D before making it physically. And that was different, having actual dimensions to work off because I can export drawings with this program, that being Pro Engineer or Creo Elements. And personally, I think it's far easier to model something in 3D than it is to make something physically from a 3D model. In this time lapse, you'll see me make several mistakes and see me redo things many times because I'm no wizard when it comes to 3D modeling, because I've only just started, but I am enjoying it thus far. And that reminds me, I've been meaning to ask you guys, that being current and possibly future subscribers, if this is something you want to see more of, that is speed 3D modeling, if you will. I understand that's not in any way a how to make video, but these are easy for me to make as far as editing goes, so I hope you do enjoy. If I do it again, I'm not sure if I'll just voice over the whole thing again, or just try and find some royalty free music. If you're unfamiliar with this program, one of the most common tools used is just sketching a shape and then extruding it out, and you would have seen and will see me do this many more times throughout the video. So now I'm just going to talk about random stuff to fill in time. So does anyone else besides me find enthusiasm annoying? I don't mean always, and I don't mean to sound like the Grinch or something. I do get really excited about some stuff, it's not like I'm never enthusiastic. But it seems that everyone has that enthusiastic friend or knows someone that is always enthusiastic about something. And if you don't share the same enthusiasm, at least somewhat, it is really annoying, at least I think so. To give an example, a couple of months ago I worked at a voting booth for a local election, and I'm there purely for the money. Working one long day and walking away with $300 is all I'm interested in. But some of the people I was working with, one in particular who I call Michelle just because I think that's a unisex name. So Michelle would say things like, yeah, go team, and yay for democracy. I'm paraphrasing of course. They didn't say those things directly, but you could tell that was Michelle's attitude. And the most annoying part is that Michelle would discuss and analyse things like, oh wait, I should mention that voting is compulsory here in Australia. Yeah, so Michelle would discuss why people did donkey slash invalid votes or why people didn't like their vote. Really stupid stuff that had simple one sentence answers, but it seemed like they wanted to write an essay about it. Main reason I bring this up is because I've never heard anyone say they find enthusiasm annoying before, and I think that's because it's more subtle and not as universally recognised as annoying like someone poking you is. I think that's because most people are comfortable with telling someone to stop poking them, but not to stop being enthusiastic. Right, like, you just have to shut them down in order for that to work, and that's just not a nice thing to do. Or maybe it's not recognised as annoying because it's not, and it's only me that thinks that. So I'm wondering, do you find enthusiasm annoying sometimes? So yeah, there's a little rant about lots of nothing. At this point in the modelling process, I ran into a problem, and it's likely you wouldn't have noticed, but I did probably just because I was staring at it for hours as I was modelling it. The reason I bring it up is because you might be wondering what exactly I'm doing here, just drawing and redrawing these lines over and over. And it's because, well look at this. No wait, this one. See both of these somewhat resemble a penis, well two. And I got a bit, I don't know if self-conscious is a word, but because I knew I was showing this to all of YouTube, I was a bit concerned. So all of that line redrawing was just me trying to make it look a little bit less dicky, but to no avail. So I figured that I'd either have to make some drastic design changes or just live with it. So in the end I decided that it wasn't that bad and once the elastic rubber goes on it wouldn't be noticeable and it wouldn't matter. I do realise that this is my ninth upload ever and that it's probably not a good idea to start talking about dicks if I want to keep my subscribers. But I figured it was the only way to explain all that line redrawing and I guess it's too late now. I'm just finishing up here with some smexy renders, and just on a side note, these take a long time, at least with my computer, like 5 hours. Mind you, I do turn all the settings up to max, and I use a pretty high resolution. So like I said earlier, I don't know if I'll continue this type of video, so let me know by leaving a comment or a like, and hopefully in the next video I'll talk a little less about male anatomy. Well, it's been a pleasure, thank you for watching, and congratulations on making it all the way to the end of this video, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time.